What's up, everybody? I see a bunch of smiling faces, and I don't know if that's because of the banter going on here with uh, Andre, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that that's why, and that's why you guys are all here. So uh, thank you guys for being here on a Wednesday night. Can I get a show of hands who's, like, super pumped, especially with this guy on the other side talking? Yeah. Oh, I see some real legit excitement right there. That's awesome. <laughs> You guys are awesome. This is going to be fun. I'm really excited. So as you all know, we're here with Andre Touchy-Feely, the one and only. So uh, thank what you guys all for joining us. And Andre, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing exceptional. Uh, I just had one of the best games I've ever had on Fortnite in the history of my life. And well, it put me in a perfect mood to start doing this. <laughs> Wait, Fortnite is a video game is like a is. can you can you liken this to another game that I actually know mm, it's like I don't know I'm I'm old I, I'm, I'm I'm like I'm 27 but it's like the game that all the young people are playing and they were just everybody kept talking about it. I was like all right cool I'm gonna download it and it's free to play so I downloaded it for free and you start playing it and I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, and now I can't stop playing it. And uh, I see what all the kids are crazy about. But it's, you can't it's stop fucked up playing because... with twelve-year-olds. No, because <laughs> they're way better. They're way better than me, and I don't want them to be. It's like the reason I keep playing is because I just like I just don't want to suck at the game anymore. So I'm just like <laughs> making a real. I'm making a solid investment into uh, into staying relevant with this game. And it's what's fucked up is I started I started playing the other day with some kids that I just like I just started playing and I got put into a group with a bunch of kids like obviously I've never met them before they're just like some random kid on the internet and so kind of like in this the game you have yeah exactly but except <laughs> in the game you have to like communicate or else your character dies so these kids are all talking about oh we're gonna go here we're gonna do this and I'm like hey guys I don't, I'm not very good I'll just follow your lead they're like oh no problem man. How old are you? How long have you been playing this game? And I had to be like, oh, I'm I'm 27. And they literally all in, <laughs> all of them in unison, they went, oh, wow. When I got 27. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, like that, that really hurt bad. They're like, they're all like, we're 12. And they were all way better than me. It was, it hurt, it hurt bad. It hurt bad. Hey, 12 year olds are advanced nowadays. I don't know, you know, what else are you going to do? For sure, for sure. Well, without wasting any more time, because I know these guys are all excited by their hands dance that we just saw, uh, we're going to jump to our first participant. So, Andrew, you are up. Where are you coming from today? Hey, what's going on? I'm coming from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Ohio? Nice. Yeah. Ohio. Yeah. I know a couple dudes from Ohio. Hey, yeah, actually, I got a couple comments I want to say real quick. First of all, thanks for having okay. me. Nice to meet you, Andre. Um, nice to meet you, dude. I, I want to say I'd probably compare Fortnite to like the Hunger Games sort of. If yeah, I had, that's a fucking. If I had to compare it to something, but all right. So I have a question. I've been wondering this for weeks. Um, obviously, you know you fought a lot of top guys in the division. One of the people being Calvin Qatar. Okay. Yeah. I want to know from an insider, how did Calvin Qatar and Moicano get that third fight on two twenty three? Is he that good? Is he the next future I, I of that division, know. you think? No, I just, I mean, I don't know about the future of the division, but he's fucking good, man. He's one of those guys who could have been in the UFC a lot of years ago. Um, he's one of the toughest guys I fought. When, when I fought him, I, he, he, he was just a bad guy that night. I didn't, I didn't feel very good. I, I kind of had an off night, and, you know, that was the biggest fight of his life. It was his first UFC fight, and he came prepared, and he, he, he's really good, man. Like, he, he's a legitimate contender in the division, you guys are just only hearing about him now because, you know, that's the way the, the works. You know, sometimes there's guys who get in UFC with five or six fights. Sometimes there's guys who get in UFC when, you know, they're 15 fights in their career. You know, it's just kind of how right. the sport goes. And he's one of those guys who got into the UFC late, but I think he's um, he's one of the better guys in the division right now, man. He's got a really, really solid skill set, and he's got a great coach uh, in um, – he's, he's, he's just got – a good team behind him. He's got great coaches and he's got a really solid skill set. So, um, yeah, he's someone you that think I, that's I kind would of a prop be... up for him. You think they're trying to prop him up? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't think there's really any easy fights in the division. I don't think there's very many easy fights in the UFC, let alone 
you know, when you start getting into 135s, 45s, and 55s, I mean, it's just it's just a, a, uh, it's just murderers row, man. It's a, it's a bunch of killers. Like 35s to 55s, I think will always be, especially 45s and 55s, in my opinion. Those will always be the big. Those will always be the um, the 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 most competitive, the most talent rich divisions. So um, I I think I think he's one of the best guys in the division. I don't know if he's the next big thing in the division. I think fans are the ones who decide that. So um, I mean, he's a good dude. He's a good fighter. That's definitely a fight that I'd like to run back and and uh, I'd like to fight him again. But you know, I got nothing bad to say about the guy. He's a He's a good fighter, and and I mean I don't I don't think there's any prop ups. I think, I think he's a really good fighter, and I think that the guy he's going to be fighting is also good. And you know we'll see which one performs. Absolutely, uh, thanks for that. One more quick question, Sage Northcut. Give us a question or give us a story that the public doesn't know about him. Something behind the scenes. Uh, the first time, the, the first time I met Sage, Sage's one of the nicest dudes I've ever met in my whole life, and he's so nice that I thought. Um, He's so nice that I thought he was fucking with me at first because he's just so <laughs> nice. Like, but it's genuine. The, the guys, everything he says is genuine. And um, the first time we were sparring, the first time, first time we shared a sparring day, uh, he was like, "Hey, Feely, you want to you want to spar around?" Like, yeah, sure. So me and him planned to go round two or three, right? So I get a couple. I get round one in, feeling good. Round two, and I'm feeling good. I go to I I go to you know. Uh, fist bump him and start the round for round three because uh you know we had agreed to spar and he goes oh yeah sweet mr feely man i'm so i spoke to <laughs> and he goes hold on let me i can't i can't say without laughing let me let me take this he goes oh sweet feely what dude i'm so stoked to be sparring with you big dog <laughs> and i and i'm like i look at him i'm like okay this dude's younger than me he's way bigger than me is he fucking with me? Because he just called me Big Dog. You know, like if someone walked up, if a young, if a really good looking younger dude who's bigger than you walked up was like, what's up, Big Dog? He'd be like, what the, that guy's fucking talking shit. You know what I mean? Right. But he's, right. Ge- but he's completely genuine. Like when he says that he's stoked to spar with, he's like, what's up, dude? I'm so stoked to spar with you. All right, man. Feely, yeah. Spar with the Big Dog. Like he, he genuinely means it. Like he really is stoked to be sparring. He's stoked to be around good people. And like, dude, he's, He's one of the nicest, one of the best people I ever met, dude, straight up. But uh, it's just funny because the first time we went to spar, you know, you're fucking, you're about to fight each other. And you're, I mean, it's controlled, it's in the gym, but you're about to fight each other. And he, uh, he says that to me and I'm like, I like look around and I'm like, did anybody hear, is, is anybody else hear that? Is he fucking with me right now? Like, is he talking shit before I round? But like, dude, he's, he's just, com- he's just the nicest dude you could ever meet, man. Like, he's just a good ass person. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Dude, do you think UFC, like, fantasy is ever going to happen? Like, where people are, like, drafting players and and doing, like, some um, type of, uh, yeah. like, I'm football? Surprised they don't, I'm surprised they don't have it yet, but I think the sport is growing. Like, when you turn on ESPN, you have, like, dozens of shows that are that talk about baseball or football or, or you know, basketball or whatever, you know, and these sports have been around for so long that people know the intricacies of the game so well that they can – they can fill up, you know, eight hours worth of TV just talking about the ins and outs of the sport. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think as MMA grows, that will happen with MMA as well. Um, I think MMA is way more exciting than all the other fucking sports. So yeah, my, I, I my would, friends I would, and I, we, we like do it in a Word doc. We like fake draft people and like put it in a Word oh, doc. No shit. We do our scoring based on like finishes, performance bonuses, and then like if you're favored and you lose, you get fucked extra or if you're an underdog and you win you get bonus points and like championship belts. Nice. i don't know we have fun man we just there's no platform Dude. for us to do it on so yeah that's pretty badass know. you got you got you guys should uh you guys should fucking try and get that out there man and make it make it open and you guys should post your formula for people to use and it I, I bet i mean that's probably how fantasy football started i don't know but probably just people fucking around like that turning into something legit <laughs> but yeah i think in what i was saying i think that like as the sport grows you'll get things like entire channels dedicated to talk about MMA or um, right. websites where you can do fantasy MMA. I think you're going to get all the things that the other big sports have. It just, it's just a matter of time. You know, the sport is still young. I mean, the sport is like, the sport is like five years older than me, you know, the official, the U right. well, I should say, I should say, <laughs> I should say the U S. Oh, Oh, we lost you. 
technical glitch. Well, Andrew, seriously, your questions are amazing. Uh, we're going to throw it over to another fan. If we thank have some more time, we'll come back your way. No, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Sorry, guys. We, we lost our, our the main, the, the big dog. Big dog is just uh, having a little bit of a glitch. But we're going to get him back in here and back to talk to you guys. I know I can see the excitement on all of your faces and the wait when <laughs> he's talking to someone else. Everyone's smiling, like waiting to go. So we're, we'll, uh, we'll get it up and running. I think next up we have Beth. Beth, where are you at? I can hear you, kind of. Are we doing Morse code? Is that what's going on? Tapping? Beth? Oh, oh there we go. Beth, where are you at? Hey. <laughs> I, I'm in the UK. In the UK? What time is it over there? It is 20 past two in the morning. Two in the morning to talk to Feely, huh? Yeah. It was a bit better so you... than six to talk to Uriah, so. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. Two or six. Like, that's like right in my prime. I could get up at six and start the day, but like two, like, that's an <laughs> odd time. You know? That's like your sleep <laughs> schedule is just totally messed up after that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a student, so I'm, it's already messed up anyway. So it's fine. <laughs> So you'll go to class tired, no big deal. Yeah, it's fine. I've already got a lecture in a few hours. It'll be okay. <laughs> oh, sure. But you know what? You'll go to your lecture feeling happier because you got to talk to Feely. So. Literally. That's, Are that's, you a big... I'll probably feel more... <laughs> yeah. Are you a, a Team Alpha Male fan or specifically an Andre Feely fan? Because I know you just mentioned you spoke with Uriah. No, yeah, I'm a big Team Alpha Male fan, yeah. Oh, mainly good. they're like my they're my main team i love it uh, who else is who else there are you a big fan of i mean i love cody obviously raya sage chad you know literally everyone i like yeah. obviously justin as well and danny everyone i just like yeah. i like watching all the training videos it motivates me to go to the gym do you follow <laughs> the team alpha male instagram do they post yes, it there yes i do yeah yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if there's if there's anything that's gonna motivate you to go to the gym, that's it. Seeing those guys and their workouts and then the, like the seventeen thousand abs that each one of them have and you just like hope that they'll spare <laughs> one for you, but they don't, so you know. Okay. Literally. Can you guys hear me? Oh yes. We've been waiting for you, Ben Ready. Well, I <laughs> had some technical difficulties and you don't know what it takes to be me, so Mm. I'm back. I'm back. Well, you're back. on with Beth, and it's two in the morning. She's in England. She's in the UK. So oh. she's here. She is sp like cutting out sleep to talk to you before she has to go to class. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys get into it. Beth, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Class isn't even. Go on then. I never. I never went to class. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, thank you. Thank you for. Uh, <laughs> thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate your time, Beth. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for speaking to me. It's cool though because I'm a music student, so it's fine. Oh, that's so way cool. Yeah, that's way. Yeah, cool I really like your music fun. as well, by the way. Oh, thanks. I'm trying. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm trying to suck less oh, at a bunch of. No, it, I, it's oh, all Pete. all your music's on my gym playlist, so I I enjoy that a lot. Oh shit! Thank you. That means so much to me. I appreciate it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, don't, I know how it feels. It's a struggle. <laughs> Sure. I like what do supporting you, like uh, underground. Yeah, I appreciate that. What do you what do you what do you play or what do you what are you going to school for? Well, I'm a I'm a singer songwriter, so I'm trying to, you know, oh, shit. start that up. But it's Very difficult. Cool. But uni helps. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's do a song together soon. Send me over some stuff. We I I would love that. That's a dream. Yeah. Because I ran into a little problem. Um, so I've been writing hip hop for a long time since I was a kid, since I was like 12 years old or 11. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe 12, 13 years old, I've been writing hip hop. Um, 
and then I started doing like punk, like vocals for a punk band when I was like twenty, like early twenties. Cause that's something I always wanted to do. Cause I'm, I'm, I really like punk, I like especially like a lot of hardcore, uh, like, uh, like hardcore shit. And um, so I can yell and I can rap, but I ju- I just started writing music that has like a small amount of like trying to harmonize and sing a little bit, and I realized that my songwriting skill is much higher than my actual singing skill. So I wrote myself these parts. I was like, oh, cool. And I'll sing a little bit here. And oh, God, it just didn't work out very well at all. It just did not work. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad I wasn't singing until I tried it. And then I heard myself recorded singing. And uh, it, it was ugly. It was but you ugly. listen to it back and you're like, it's bad. Yeah. And then, you know, you can tell That's everyone else. Auto-tune, yeah, but the, here's the problem. When you use auto-tune a little bit, when you use auto-tune a little bit, you're like, oh, this sounds great. When you use auto-tune a lot, it, like, makes your – now you just have shitty singing, and I need a lot of auto-tune. Now it's like there's shitty singing with, like, a layer of auto-tune, and it just is – it's just bad. It's just bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I like a bit of auto-tune. It's like when you've got yeah. a soft throat, it's a life safe. For sure, for sure. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll look, not get too heavy into it. Beth, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take away from you. What was your question? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, talking oh, about yeah. music. Um, it was just who would your dream fight be from, like, any weight class? Like, if you were in, like, a magical world where you could just fight anybody. Just be the same size. Um, yeah. <laughs> my dream fight right now, my dream fight right now, not in a magical world, in this world is, like, Conor McGregor probably because that's the biggest payday. Or even if, or even like going over <laughs> to boxing, or or going over to boxing and fighting a, a a well-known boxer. Like my my dream fight right now is whatever fight makes me a, a few million dollars. Uh, I'll fight anybody, uh, and especially when <laughs> especially when getting paid really well. But my dream fight, just out of like being a, a being a, a fight nerd and like really being a fan of the sport since I was a kid. Um, Maybe maybe Pedro Hizo, like if I could magically gain a hundred pounds, I'd fight uh, I'd fight Pedro <laughs> Hizo. Maybe just out of and not even fight, not not even fight, but just to spar, like because I think he was so ahead of his time, and I think he, um, yeah. So maybe not fight, but to spar, because you know, just just out of respect, I, I think Pedro Hizo is one of the most underrated like pioneers. He he was so ahead of his time. I think Pedro Hizo could hang with guys now. I think if you, I think if he was in his prime now. He, he could be beating most of the guys in the UFC even today. And, and, and that's not something you could say about a lot of the pioneers. A lot of the pioneers were really good for their time. I think Pedro Hizzo is really good for all time. Um, another guy I'd really love to spar with would be um, Eve Edwards because he's just so creative. He has such a fun style. He's always jumping around and doing crazy. He's like thug jitsu shit. You know, his style, his style is so exciting. I think he'd be a really fun guy, a really fun guy to like get some rounds with and spar with and stuff. So yeah, I'd probably say Eve Edwards or I don't know about fight, but if I could be the same size as, as anybody, I would probably spar with Pedro Hizzo and uh, Eve Edwards probably. Cool. Yeah. So maybe you could fight Connor now and then Mayweather. What's that? What's that? You could fight Connor now and then go on to Mayweather. So you could do Connor then the boxer. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And then I would just be swimming. And then I would just swim in money. I'd be like, you know, where Scrooge McDuck <laughs> just died in a pool of gold coins. <laughs> you'd never, you'd never see me again. Like you guys would never see me again. I, I would, I might never fight again. Like I might never set foot in a gym again. Like don't ask me to do shit. I'd probably just be swimming around in gold coins like Scrooge McDuck. Like Ducktales, we got you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> awesome. Like Thank chills. you so much, Beth. That was a good one. We'll, uh, we're going to jump on over to Dylan next. And Dylan, where are you at? Dylan? Oh, there he oh is. I kind of hear you. Where, say that again one more time. I see him, but I'm... I see him. Can you hear me now? Yes, can hear you now. There I see go. your lips moving, but I can't make out the words. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in California on vacation, but I had to get on here, make sure I said hi. Uh, oh, but I'm sick. originally from Las Vegas. Nice. Yeah. Good place, that Las Vegas. 
a little warm sometimes in the summer, but I mean, it's good for the UFC fights. <laughs> Dylan, what was your question? Well, but mainly, you know, Team Alpha Male, they do so well uh, with their fighters and everything like that. And I, it's probably great, you know, for the team. How do you navigate through, like, being with all these guys in the same weight class and, like, friendships and not fighting with people? Just, like, you know, how do you navigate uh, fights in the UFC without fighting all your teammates? Um, a big thing for me is, is this, I, I just genuinely like to see the people I care about do good, you know? So I don't, I don't have like this desire, like to, to fight anyone that I'm friends with. I, I really, I don't have the desire to do, to do that really. It's these people that I, I mean, I'll fight, I'll fight people that I'm friendly with or that, uh, you know, that I, that I maybe I consider a friend, but I wouldn't want to fight someone that I train with every day, you know, who like, like, I, you know, for instance, like Darren Elkins. Like I only like I love seeing Derek Darren Elkins do good, you know. Like I, I've I've like I've played with his kids and like had barbecues with his, you know, where his wife is there. Like I, I don't want to take food out of his kids, off his kids' plate or 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 you know money out of his bank account. You know, like I don't want to fight someone that I'm close with. Um, and also, the division we're at, I think it'd be different if we were heavyweights or something. But we're you know we're all pretty regular sized guys, so there's no shortage of people to fight. There's 80 people at the 145 pound division. I mean, there's, there's not mm. a shortage of guys to fight, you know? So that, that also helps a lot. I think if maybe we were in a different weight class, it wouldn't work as well, but there's so many guys in our weight class to fight that I think it really allows for all of us to, to do well and be dominant and still train together. You know, we're going to have a monopoly on the, on the 45 division pretty soon. If we all just keep winning these fights, you know, when we all keep winning these fights, we're going to be the 45 division, the top 10 is going to be stacked with, four or five alpha male guys, you know, and there's enough guys coming in trying to break into the top 10 that, that, you know, we'll be able to fight them. We don't have to fight each other. Congratulations, by the way, you you know, you did a great job making it, pulling it through and everything like that. I heard you got a knee surgery. How's that going for you? It's good, man. I, uh, I'm just resting up a little bit. I, I haven't been able to do a lot of dynamic MMA stuff, but I've just been lifting a bunch of weights. I've been doing, like, meathead stuff, like, doing weightlifting, and um, and I've been, like, trying to make sure I do some mobility classes and doing my physical therapy, doing cryotherapy, doing all the stuff that I can do outside of actually, like, sparring or doing jiu-jitsu. So it's going well, and it's nice to have a little break because it makes you hungry, but, dude, I'm getting the itch, man. I, I got to get back on the mat soon. I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> I got to start fighting again soon. Get get in the itch again. You got to get back out there. Yeah, man. It's like I, I fighting is so ingrained in me. Like it's just such a part of. I feel like part of me and a part of you know every day like that my everyday life that when I when I'm not fighting consistently I get like I get the itch, man. I gotta. I miss sparring. I miss jujitsu. You know, I miss. I miss. I miss getting my ass kicked a little bit and making adjustments and then going back and winning the next round. You know, like I miss that. You know what I mean? I miss that where like, there's a feeling you get when you get your ass. Like if you spar five, if you spar five rounds and you get your ass beat the second round and you come back and win the third, fourth and fifth, like that's a good feeling, you know, like that'll set you up for the rest of your day. But it, you know, it's not for me. I know weightlifting is cool for a lot of people. For me, it doesn't give me the same feeling as, as, as getting in there and, and fighting every day. And, um, so I'm starting. I'm starting to miss it a lot for sure. Awesome. Yeah, like two months. I only got like five weeks. So we're good. It'll come quicker than you know. For sure. For well, sure. thank you so much, Dylan. Appreciate your time and for joining us. Thanks for having us. Hope to see you soon. Awesome. Thanks, brother. All right, we are going to throw it over to Georgia. And Georgia, where are you coming from today? Australia. Oh, oh. what time is it over there? It's 10.30, midday. Okay, awesome. Well, you're on with Andre, so go for it. What's your question? What's up, well, I was Hello, how are you? Um, I was going to ask what Dylan asked about the knee, but I'll ask a different question. Um, okay. So what do you usually, like, exercise do you do to prep for your, like, fight week? And what's your favorite exercise? Like, my actual fight week, like the week of the fight, or my fight camp? Yeah. So before you go into your fight week, like what are the exercises that you'll do to prepare for that? Um, so as I've gotten older, I've, I've learned that less is more closer to the fight. So, um, 
you know, all the hard work is done. Like, let's say I have an eight week camp. All the hard work is done the first six weeks, really, you know, um, the last two weeks and especially the, uh, especially the week of, you know, it's not really about like grinding and putting in rounds and, and making sure that you're going a hundred percent. It's about, it's sort of peaking. It's like, you know, like before gladiators fight, they, they drink wine and make love and party and all these, they wouldn't fight before they fought because you know, they're going to fight tomorrow. They might, you know, you might, you might fight to the death tomorrow. So they're going to party and drink wine and, and, and celebrate before they fight. So by the time that you fight, you're rejuvenated. So that I like to kind of have that mentality where, you know, the week of the fight, the hard work's already done and it's just about losing the weight and, and making, making yeah. 145. So when I'm in, when I'm in the room, let's say I, I fought in, um, I fought in North Carolina last, last, last fight. I went, I flew in Tuesday and then Tuesday to Friday is just about making weight. So we're in the warm up room, and you know you're not going to see a lot of like crazy rounds. It's more just being with your coaches and being with your friends. And um, I, my friends fly out with me wherever I fight. My two best friends. So my workouts yes. are really just yeah. My workouts are really just hanging out with my friends in a really hot, sweaty room. And I'm just I'm just hitting mitts, or I'm doing a little bit of jujitsu. And I'm, I'm sometimes I'm even dancing around or jump roping or just like. I'm really just moving to get the weight off. So it's just a lot of movement and, and, and just good vibes. You know, like I try to just, you know, sometimes I'm, I put on a playlist, I dance around, I jump rope, I shadow box, but the whole time you're kind of bullshitting with your friends and making jokes and the music's playing. And like, it's really just about cutting the weight and, and trying to enjoy it as much as you can. Cause it's going to suck a little bit. So just try to enjoy the fight week. Yeah. What do you do after the fight week? Like what will you do to like your favorite thing to eat and like stuff like that? I do nothing. After fight week, I do nothing. I'm the laziest piece of shit in the world. I uh, <laughs> I'm in bed. I'm I'm in my bed right now. So this is what this is what I do fight week. I'd be in this exact position. I'd have I'd have food resting on my stomach, which would be huge from just shoving everything in my face that I can. And I would just be eating and watching cartoons. This is this is what I do after my fights. And sometimes I go and then I go, babe. Or I go, or to my roommate, I go, Anthony, and then ask them to bring me stuff because I don't want to. Like, this is, that's literally, I just yell for my roommate or my girlfriend. I just yell for them to bring me stuff and I eat pizza. Like, <laughs> like Bob. And my, using my, you right here. And I just eat. So that's, that's literally, that's a first hand look at uh, what I do. The only reason I would get up is uh, to go get a tattoo or to go get more food with friends, like eat at a restaurant somewhere. Yeah. Sounds about right though, right, Georgia? Yeah. I know that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, that sounds about right though, after you fight, right? I mean, don't you deserve a little bit of like waiting on hand and foot action? I think so, but yeah, I mean, I wish I had a cooler answer for you. I wish I could be like, (laughs) oh yeah, it's so cool. We, we We go do this one thing and blah 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 and but nah mostly it's just being a lazy lazy bastard actually actually i think about it this is this is this is a little different but it's pretty much more the same there's a local restaurant like well not local there's a there's a italian restaurant called buca di beppo and we have one like five minutes from my house and every after every fight i get all my friends together like there's like 25 of us and we just go and we get drunk and we are the most loud obnoxious customers that any restaurants ever had they usually sep- they usually seat us completely separate from everyone else so we don't ruin anyone's time and we just get all my childhood friends together and we eat and drink and just celebrate the fight you know so that's that's a good ritual i guess that awesome sounds sweet. yep sounds good to us right yeah definitely <laughs> thank you so much georgia appreciate it georgia you're awesome thank you so much All right. In the interest of time, I'm going to speed it up just a little bit so everyone gets a chance to talk to you. Um, But next up, we have Danny. So, Danny, where are you coming from today? (laughs) Um, I'm in Columbus, Ohio right now. Uh Oh. I know a couple dudes from Ohio. Fucking psychopaths. You know a guy named Cody Garbrandt? You know a guy named Cody Garbrandt? That guy's fucking psycho. I've heard. He's uh, not too far from where I grew up. Nice. Um, wait, I actually have a question first. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, wait, no, Samia, so the host, 
Samia? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Samia. Oh. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. we're really? You're friends with Courtney. You what was that? You're friends with Courtney? Yes. Yeah, so my brother's uh he's really good friends with Courtney too, and we're coming to Brooklyn for um UFC two twenty three. And oh, we're, all, we're all going to lunch on Sunday. You should come with us because we'd love to meet you. Well, if I'm in Brooklyn, I will take you up on that offer for sure. You should. Wait a minute. Who's, whose fan cast is this? <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. It's... I had to ask my brother. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Now, do you think? Really, don't salt my game right now. Could you, like, give a little? Stop taking it all? Sorry. Honestly, Sammy is a nice, Sammy is a nice young lady, and... I hope that she goes to have lunch with you and your brother. Yeah. My brother really <laughs> wants to. Well, Danny, I super appreciate that. But, you know, because I think we're making Andre a little bit jealous, I had an ask what? your All question right. for him. <laughs> yeah. Go for is, it. Um, you fought Artem in Poland. And one of the biggest, like, news stories um, was Connor being there for Artem and, like, standing up in the crowd and, uh, like coaching him, what was your experience like? And like, what did you hear Connor saying? Um, you know, it's funny. I didn't realize he was doing all that shit on my walkout because I was so in the zone. But then I saw him when I got in the cage, and um, I love it, man. I love confrontation. I feed off that feeling. Like, I love that feeling of like us versus them. Like, somebody's gonna get beat the fuck up. Like, that's the feeling. That's why I started fighting was just so was just for that feeling. So I could, I love that feeling of that fucking confrontation of like. Like, all right, motherfucker, like, it, let's do this. You know, like, I love that feeling. Um, and so when he was doing all that shit, you know, I, I hit the I hit the billionaire strut on him. I was staring him down. Like, I love that feeling, you know. And, and for a second, my coaches were like, oh, don't get don't get wrapped up in that, you know. But I, I told them, I told them, they were leaning over the octagon. They're like, don't get wrapped up in that. And I turned around and said, nah, like, I love this shit. Like, I, I live for this shit. Like, like I, that made the fight so much better, you know. Like, after I dropped Artem with the head kick, I made sure before I walked to my corner, I walked over to Arm's corner and looked. I uh, Connor was standing there with like two juiced out gig gigantic Irish dudes in like baby gap t shirts, like they're ripping out of their t shirts. So I made a point to walk over and stare them both down, like, what's up, motherfucker? You know, like that, that experience was really, um, that experience was really good, you know? Um, you know, pe a lot of people hate on Connor, and I understand why. And, uh, if any of my friends are fighting him, then fuck him, you know. But uh, but overall, I think he's really good for the sport, and he brings you know he brings money and he brings publicity. So him being there for that fight, that was that was fucking awesome for me. That was a really good experience for me. Wow, yeah, I love that mentality you have, man. Um, another question I have: um, You've been at Team Alpha Male since like the days when uh, Cody and Paige were dating. Do you have any yeah. like? Good, do you have any <laughs> good stories about them? Like you had about Sage? Um. None that I could tell, at least. I don't think anything that I could repeat out loud. Uh, nah, nah, I don't really have, I mean, let me see. I'm trying to think of a good one. I don't, I don't think so. Um, did you ever take her out on any dates there, Feely? I did not. Matter okay. of fact. Just wanted to ask. Nam, Just wanted to ask. Mind your business. Stan, what do you call you? Sam, Sam, I'm not going to tell you. What did I'm he not going to tell you. Sam, 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 he said, Sam, 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 yeah, that's not what he said. Mind your business, right. or I'm talking to my friends. No, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any, uh, stories I can think of, really. But, um, yeah, those crazy kids, it was a fun time. Like, I'm really glad that I got to grow. I sort of like, I, I had this experience, I would say, from like 12 years old to like 19 where I was running amok and getting in trouble and my friends were selling drugs and getting arrested and we were partying and like, I wouldn't condone that to anyone, but it was a really crazy. And at times it was a really fun way to grow up. And then right at like 19, I joined team alpha male and it was a whole 180. And it was all these positive influences and these people who were really like being successful and really chasing the right things. And so I'm really thankful that I got the early years, but I'm also very thankful that I got to be, that I kind of got to get the last part of my growing up into an adult, I kind of got to do that at Team Alpha Male. And so being around Paige and Cody and Uriah and, and Chad and Benavidez, all these guys, all these people, these really just really cool people, it's, I'm super fortunate to have been around for that.
I mean, that was an awesome question. And thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And um, we're going to shoot right over, hopefully, to your brother at some point. But I think next up, we have Elijah. So, Elijah, where are you coming from today? Hey, what's up, Andre? I'm coming from New York. What up? How's everything? It's good, man. Chilling. Question for you. Okay. Who is your biggest influence in the sport? Um, you dating back to when it first started, whoever, anybody prior to or now. So B, so BJ Penn, like I just wanted to be BJ Penn when I was like 15, like BJ Penn, like BJ Penn, like 2005, when I saw him fight, I was like, fuck, that's it, dude. That's it. That's it. That's what I, that's what I want to be that. I want to be that guy. When BJ Penn was just tearing through motherfuckers at 155, Sometimes he was all in shape. Sometimes he was just a chubby Hawaiian dude. It didn't fucking matter. He was beating the fuck out of people. I'm like, I want to be that. I want to be, because I'm Hawaiian Samoan. I was like, that's, I want to be that guy, that motherfucker. Um, so probably BJ, but um, day-to-day life, MMA included, like my actual probably biggest influence was, would probably be Faber. Just because Faber or maybe Danny Castillo, just because of how much they've actually affected my life and how much they inspire me on like a day-to-day basis when i was young be probably bj penn but now i would say faber and castillo are are, you know those three guys probably awesome oh can you hear me can you hear me now (laughs) that's a verizon commercial Uh uh-oh another question we're having some audio samia why do you always do this this is you. This is not me. Elijah, if we can uh, fix everything, we'll come back to you. But we will swing over to James. James, where are you coming from today? How are we doing? I'm good. How are you, brother? Yeah, good, man. Good. Uh, my question is, dude, I saw that you were uh, pairing Girl Scout cookies with your uh, some liquor, man. Which one... <laughs> Which one do you reckon goes best with the – what liquor goes best with Girl Scout cookies? I, I, listen, I don't recommend any of it. It's a fucking terrible experience. <laughs> um, I just can just tell you what I did. Uh, I did uh, – I had a Ciroc, vodka, um, vanilla, almond nice. milk, blue diamond, almond milk, and um, the tag, the little tagalongs. I think now they changed the name to um, peanut butter some shits, but – the the tag along. So I had peanut butter and chocolate c- Girl Scout cookies, almond milk, and um, un unflavored vodka. Um, I would not recommend that to anyone. I, <laughs> any one of those things, any one of those things separately is a real treat. Uh, together, just not a good mix. Bro. Not a good mix. <laughs> James, try them all. At, you know, let report back. Let us know exactly how that that pans out for you. Good luck. Yeah, we'll do it. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Awesome. Okay, next up, and I think one of our last people, it's going to be John. John, where are you at today? Hey, I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Cool. Yes. Yep. I'm from California. Hey, my dog. Piece of shit. Sorry. I'm distracted. Hey, what's up? Uh, it's. Hey, what's up, Andre? It's it's really cool, by the way, uh, to see you uh, like a different side of your lifestyle. I um I actually uh go way back with uh, Carolyn, and I see her. Uh, I see you on her Snap every or on her Instagram every now and then. Oh yeah, hope you guys are having a great time. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Yeah, I can't. It can't always be fist fights and shit. You know what I mean? Have to has to be yeah, other exactly, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I totally agree. Hey, so um, by the way, uh, big shout out but to that Pedro Hizzo, man, going way back in time with that one, huh? Yeah, and he was a gangster. I remember seeing when I first started getting into MMA, I was just, I was just like obsessed. I wanted to just get every piece of information, see every fight I'd ever missed. Um, and yeah, I remember I'm surprised seeing. When... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, brother. It's all good. No, I'm surprised when uh, people, uh, you know, when you watch his videos and you see his. His how much his uh, leg kicks and body kicks would affect people that people don't use that as much now. I mean, the guy yeah. just demolish people, especially heavyweights, man. I think heavyweight a lot of the heavyweights now they just they really invest in that one big punch, which I mean it's not a bad idea because I mean any any time you get over two hundred pounds, 
any one of those punches. Like like forty fives, there's certain guys who can, who can change a fight with one punch. Uh, I think I'm one of those guys. There's a lot of other guys who can change a fight with one punch at forty fives, but almost everyone at heavyweight can change a fight with one punch. So they all right. just completely bank on that one big shot. Um, but Pedro Hizo was one of the few heavyweights that really had that patience. He, like he had the patience yeah, it to took you to, apart. Yeah, he picked you apart. He ripped the outside leg. He ripped the lead leg from the outside. He ripped the inside of the lead leg. He ripped the body kick. And when I saw him pick apart, um, I saw him pick apart Tank Abbott when I was like fourteen or fifteen. I went back and watched that fight, and I was just like, thought it was the fucking coolest thing I'd ever seen to see him just pick apart this this guy who was just trying to take his head off. And he had the patience and the he had the patience and like the the. The, the awareness to just pick this dude apart. And I always thought that was something really special. You see that uh, in Stipe. I, you just saw that with Stipe and uh, Ngannou. Stipe is one of those heavyweights that, I mean, he can he he cracks too. He obviously puts a lot into that right hand, but um, he also has the patience to really to really um, use a game plan and, and see it through. So that, that's always cool to me. Definitely. So uh, one of my big questions actually that I had is um, so. Just out of curiosity, you know, something that's always one like pondering when you see a guy so young in the in his career fight a guy who, you know, you guys go on paths or whatever. But what was it like to uh, fight Max Holloway early on and you know see him where he's at? I'm pretty sure that gets you hungry too. But like, what was it like, you know, being in the ring with some guy who now is like, you know, the the guy you're shooting for? Um, yeah, it was a cool experience, man. Max is someone that I had seen. Uh fight for for a while you know he, he he got in the ufc real pretty early in his career and um you know that's someone that that I, that's one of the very few people at my own division that's not he's one of the very few people uh in that's in my division that's not on my team that i actually consider like a homie like i i like seeing max do good man i like i like seeing his success you know and i definitely plan on meeting him again down the road like i, I think me and him are gonna fight for the belt you know and uh in the next year, I think me and him will probably have a couple of rematches. You know, uh, I think I think by the time it's all said and done, him and I will have uh, have at least a trilogy. You know, and um, yeah, that's that's someone that I that I got a lot of respect for. But um, it was definitely a, a hard lesson to learn. You know, I, I hadn't when I lost to Max, I hadn't lost a fight since I, I lost to Max in 2013. I hadn't lost a fight since 2009. I had only lost, lost one fight in my career then, and. So, so you know, loss is fucking awful. They they with that you. They, they you know they still bother me to stay in my losses. But um, you learn. From it. So I'm I'm really fortunate to have learned that early on in my career, and um, it, it, it also gives confidence. You know that I don't think there's I don't think there's another fighter in any division really that has had the kind of fight that me and Max have had. Um, like I don't think there's really anyone else in the UFC. You know, you'd be hard. It'd be hard to find someone else in UFC that could say that they've had a fight like I've had with Max with the with the champion of their weight class. Like I can look at the weight class and say, hey, we we had a badass fight. I dropped him. He, he dropped me, and he did with the choke. Like we went back and forth, and we were super evenly matched. And you know that that makes me super hungry. That makes me that reassures the things that I've already said. You know, I think I'm the best 45er in the world, and and on any night I can go out and beat anybody. You know, and yeah, it, it makes me very hungry. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, and you gotta keep it that way, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're not if you're not hungry, if you don't want to be the baddest motherfucker in the world, then you're in the wrong sport. You know, I'm trying to beat everybody up. You know, whether whether it's the dude or it's the guy with the belt, whoever it is. Like, if you're not in the sport to be the baddest motherfucker in the world, then it's probably not the sport for you. You know, so I got a lot of respect for awesome. Max. I got a lot of love for him. Um, he's one of the few guys in the consider a homie but um you got to be i, I want to be beat everybody up. the best motherfucker in the world you know what i'm saying so uh, i'm excited for that i'm excited to get my title shot this year and win that belt thank you so much john and make sure you tell carolyn hello for all of us tell carolyn i said <clears throat> nah. <laughs> all right we're gonna hello. finish it up strong with elijah Elijah, sorry, we, we lost you a little bit earlier, but we're bringing you back. So uh, go ahead and finish up whatever you had for uh, Andre. Yeah, Andre, that's really messed up. You cut me off there. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we got to step in the cage together. Dude, that wasn't me. That was your girl, Sammy. Uh, 
<laughs> and uh, and I had nothing to do with that. I'm just I'm a bystander, just like you know, I'm a victim of circumstance. I didn't. This is my first time on the. <laughs> Elijah, does it look like that. I would do that? I feel like he's just throwing uh, the, you know, I throwing the know. heat somewhere else. You kind of look like the person that would do that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Not only, not only does she look like the person that would do that, she looked like the person that would do that, and then Penn, she had no idea she did it. Like, oh, why not? She just didn't do that. I think we just got to do a triple threat match between the three of us at this point. Oh, all Two right, I'm down. You, you and you can do it. I'll be special guest referee. <laughs> uh last question for you being uh that i got cut off there what is your take <laughs> on new management and just the way like ufc has been running the company in general with like these super fights and are you trying to get me is elijah you trying to get me hurt is that what you're doing <laughs> well, I, w wme has ears everywhere no um, <laughs> uh, um I, honestly, I like it. I think it's good. I think that the nature of the sport is pretty fun. It's pretty much sink or swim. You know, with the new management, you have more. It's it's pretty much sink or swim. If you perform well, and you do what you're supposed to do, and you say the right things, and you and you are someone that people want to see fight. If if you can connect with people, um, then you get then then they'll look out for you. And if you're a guy who who doesn't perform as well or you know, people don't really feel a connection to, then you're not going to get as much love, you know? And I think that's just the nature of the sport. This isn't this isn't a team sport, you know? As much as we, we, we as much as I love my team and, and, and being on Game Alpha Camille, it's just me. When I'm in the cage, it's just me. And so um, my performance and my performance and the things I do and the way I carry myself, what dictates whether people connect with me. And, you know, there's some fighters who don't do it and, and they don't get much love, but um, I think WWE getting behind the sport is 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 a big deal, and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna really be good for a lot of people. I, I'm I'm very optimistic about it. Um, the super fights and the interim belts and all that shit. I don't know, man. I think maybe it's watering it down a little bit just because of the amount of the interim fights. But I don't really try to focus on that shit. I just focus on what I can control. Um, Every time they put me in the cage from now on, I'm going to beat somebody up and get hand raised. And as long as I do that, I like that. Awesome. Thank you, well, Elijah. That was awesome. What, one last thing. I'd yeah. love to see you and Jason Knight swing. I think that would be a hell of a match. Yeah. I think it would be a really good fight. I, I Honestly, I thought I was kind of big. I, I, I bet if he's a cool dude, his, his quarter men are super funny. And, uh, I, think me, I think him and I would be a really fun fight. Thing is, I'm on a two fight win streak, and he's on a two fight skid right now. And so, it, I don't know if they'll partner us, if they'll pair us up because it doesn't make much sense in loss wise. Um, but that's a fight that I'm not opposed to down, down the road. It's very entertaining. I think it's fight of the night. It's got fight of the night written all over. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it'd be a great fight. But or um, or I'm, Choi, I'm, Choi would be I'm another. Really, great. Choi would be a fight I'm really interested in as well. I'm really just looking to fight anyone with an. With a with a single digit number next to their name, man. Anybody anybody with a number next to their name, preferably top ten. I, I want to I want to beat whoever they put in front of me. So if you know if they give me night, they give me night. If they give me Troy, they give me Troy. If they give me whoever, I'm beating up whoever they put in front of me. But um, from now on, I'm definitely trying to fight up. I'm trying to fight people with a with a low number next to their name. I mean. Mhm. Awesome, Elijah. I just wanted to point out. I saw uh, down down at the little bottom screen. I saw a lot of middle fingers go up when you came on. I don't know if you made enemies or if they're actually friends instead. But I just wanted to throw that one out there. Elijah, you pissing people off in this chat or what? Quite possibly. Well, anyways, thank you so much, Elijah. Appreciate it. I see you have a lovely lady over there, so we're just gonna say hi to her. And uh, <laughs> thank you to all of the participants that joined on to talk to Philly. Uh, Philly, this is your time to go ahead and say whatever you'd like to your fans, whatever message. Uh, so I turn it over to uh, you. Where do, I, where do I start? All right, I want to talk about. I want to hit. I want to ask the hard questions. Uh, no, no uh, thanks to everybody. Um, it's just it's just so rad to see people that actually want to have a conversation and it's cool to get to interact with this platform i think co-star is doing some really special shit and this is the first of many so i'm really hoping to talk to you guys more um i'm just super thankful to be here like i'm, I'm i come from nothing you know i'm a kid i'm just a fuck up i was a kid who was fucking up and 
exciting, crazy to me that through the M the platform of MMA that I can get to have experiences like talking with you guys and, and doing this co-star thing. So I'm I'm super thankful for you guys' time and, and support and uh, and uh, um, here. So stay with me. Um, it, it's uh, being being one of my fans is a long term, but it's gonna start paying off. So I appreciate you guys. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us on a Wednesday night and keeping us company. All of your questions were amazing. This is such a great group of people. So hopefully to catch you, we'll catch you guys next time on Feely's FanCast. You can always follow our Instagram, CoStar Experience, and follow all of the events that we have coming up, live new episodes, anything that's relevant and exciting is on there. And of course, download the app so that you can tune into stuff like this. So thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Outcastunderdogs.com.